Removing Wet Carpet and Press Board Subfloors William Hovey Smith 2021 We pull the carpet back as you can see the padding is still down there and we will replace this padding and dry our carpet. Previous videos show replacing a leaking cutoff valve and making a carpet lifting tool. Now I am looking at a 5 inch hump in the press board. What is it? Is it animal, vegetable, or mineral? So we're going to get in there and see if we can find out. Hmm. There's a wood underneath, but all the saturated stuff's gonna have to go. My own homemade carpet lifter tool here, plus a mason's hammer, plus an ordinary claw hammer does good in removing these tack strips. And we'll start with this. And then My small tools, including my homemade carpet lifter, are fine for working in close places and around the edges. However, if you have a flooded house and you have a floor that looks like this, you need to be more aggressive from the outset. So, we have brought in some bigger tools, a mattock and a hardcore axe. Hardcore makes these axes and it has a driving head as you can see uh, something like a sledgehammer and also a bearded blade so it is unique in that respect the procedure is to set the edge here then drive and use the leverage of this arm to lift Okay, if we have to get it one piece at a time, we'll get it one piece at a time. It's obvious I'm going to have to go back several more feet. We're still in damaged sawdust board, I guess this stuff is. And so we need to get rid of all of that. Uh, that waterproof paper... Uh, help somewhat but that probably needs to come off too so we can actually dry the wood underneath after pulling back the carpet the problem is far worse than I had anticipated as it turned out when fully exposed the damage is not so bad as it might have been instead of going all the way across the bathroom it only went halfway across the bathroom and so that gives me something I can really work with now that we're working up against that portion of the press board that has not been thoroughly wetted but is indeed quite solid, uh, we have the problem of making a cut so we can extract those partially wetted boards because I can't very well uh, make an irregular cut like that. I'm going to try to extract that smaller piece. Uh, as a unit and then we can see what we can do about the larger one. On that piece of press board against the wall uh, what I'm doing is taking a chisel 
and making a cut down through it I don't necessarily I'm not necessarily getting absolutely to the bottom of the board but I'm taking uh, eight good strikes with my soft hammer and if you ever wondered this is what those two and three inch wide chisels are for uh, that you see occasionally in the hardware stores It came out like it was supposed to. This heart pine flooring really holds these nails tightly, so oftentimes they need a little encouragement to come out. That one was bent over anyway. Rather than chisel out that piece of soaked press board inch by inch. I have put down a 2x4 and also another piece of wood beneath it so that when I cut I will cut through the press board and leave a deep gap but not touch the floor beneath. So that is the plan and we'll see how it executes. the good deep cut that was desired. Whoever put in these nails was pretty fastidious about putting them in every six inches. Even though I might not have been able to have seen them because of the swelling of the wood, I did find them nonetheless. Okay, we're going to put our lifting tool underneath that triangle and see if we can extract it. Well, two more nails found and extracted. Now we'll see if we can lift that magic triangle. I'm an author of outdoor books and also business titles. And my most recent book is Make Your Own Job Anytime, Anywhere, at Any Age. In this book, I advocate that anyone actually start their own little mini-businesses or full-fledged businesses whilst they are still employed. That way, if their job suddenly becomes non-existent, they have something already under development to fall back on. This works equally well for anyone from teenagers to senior citizens. I do not wind up extracting that as neatly as I would like because one nail head eluded me. And so I broke it in two. So I'm going to go down and lay out some paper. And when I get the paper laid out, take this out and make a tracing so I know exactly the shape of this piece so I can use that tracing to guide me when I cut the press board. Finishing up today, I guess we have the bulk removal done and that the mass of material that's gone out the door has been the majority of the work. 
but we still have edges to get which is going to take time as well as this paper to lift and I want to take my care with that and I'm also going to have to finish up down there next to the hearth and cut that press board a little bit partially with the saw as I did before and partially with the chisel to get that out of there and clean up these edges so when I cut my press board I have clean edge to edge fits. I'm going to use this Black and Decker jigsaw and use it to cut along this part and then hammer and then chisels and hook bill knife and my mason's hammer here to dig out the rest of it. There is an electrical line back here somewhere. I want to be a little cautious about that one. But those relieving cuts are helping. I cleared about another three or four inches, but I ran into a problem and I'm running into nails. They put a roll of nails that's underneath the baseboard there. So I'm going to go to a next larger tool, an angle grinder, and see if we can use that to cut some of this excess away. That concept worked, but the tool was too small, and I couldn't get a straight shot back into the press board without changing the position of the guard. Well, I know I ran into another nail about here. We now have finally all the wetted material stripped off the floor. And I still have a little work to do under those baseboards to clear nails and a little bit of the press board that's still stuck under there. As well as some work to do on the molding. But for now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal. Be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. My carpet lifting tool worked fine on carpet and saturated press board, but it would not take the impact of hammering against fresh board. And so what I have done with it is actually added a nut and bolt to reinforce the grip. Trying smaller tools and then progressing to larger ones has been a recurring theme in this video. Two new types of tools were indicated. Now the first is my one-handed carpet lifter, uh, which I made, and the other is a mattock with a flat driving head similar to the one used on the hardcore axe. Now you could use hose to do this work too, but these are typically too weak to stand up, much in the way of driving and prime. If you are a custom blade maker who lives in flood or hurricane country, uh, make these tools and add them to your line. Uh, there is certainly a need. If someone wants a presentation grade tool out of fine woods and Damascus blades with my stamp on it, well, uh, that's 500 bucks. But uh, the rest of them, yeah, you home hobbyists, go to it, guys. 
For more information on my books, blogs, and other projects, go to www.hoviesmith.com. For my business books, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. The initial voice recording of my novel, Until Death Do You Part, is now being edited for release next month. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.